G'day and welcome to today's model workshop. Today I'm going to be going through uh, a comparison of different chipping methods. So I'll be talking about the hairspray technique and also some proprietary chipping fluids that you can purchase from model shops. So these are the items I'm going to be spraying today. A whole bunch of plastic spoons and some bits and pieces that I'm using scratch built stuff for my sci-fi diorama. Uh, at this stage it's all either bare metal, uh, this is from a beer can, or plastic or styrene. I'm going to be spraying it with enamel primer just to give it something to bite onto. So I'll spray these bad boys now, come back to you. Right, so the whole lot is primed, dried for a bit, and now I'm going to paint it in rust tones, starting with some airbrushing of just some Tamiya browns. So I'm going to do a mixture of red brown bit of desert yellow, bit of German grey, and just modulate the tones a little bit. I won't bore you with the details, I'll just get ahead and do it. So I've finished doing my rust effect. Um, I won't go into details here, but you can see the rust. Um, I've used sort of speckling with lighter colours and some light washes. Try and get in focus there. Yeah. Some light washes try and you know, vary it up. It doesn't have to be perfect to be honest because most of this is going to get covered up. Um, so these are my test spoons. So the products that we're going to be testing are AK Interactive Heavy Chipping Fluid, Vallejo Chipping Medium and good old hairspray. This is cheap as chips. So I think this cost about $10, this was about $5, this was about $2. As you can see I've labelled all my spoons and I'm going to be doing three versions of each. I'm going to be doing a heavy coat, a medium coat and quite a light coat of the chipping medium and correspondingly heavy, medium, light coats of paint on top of it as well. So I'm going to start with the hairspray because it's the easiest. So shake it up and Hairspray medium, please don't look at my lawn, it needs a mow. Hairspray, and this is hairspray heavy, so. It's pretty, pretty glossy. Um, it's almost starting to dimple there, so I wouldn't want to put too much more on. That's my first one. Hairspray medium. Probably about enough. And hairspray light. That's it. So you can see it's almost not even glossy. You can see it's almost not even glossy there. So this one's pretty much dry already. Medium getting there. This one's still glossy. They all dry flat. So that's my hairspray. Let's move on. Next up is Vallejo. So same thing again. So I guess one extra step in these is that you do have to airbrush them on. It's you know, a little bit less convenient than the hairspray. Not a big deal if you own an airbrush, but if you don't, that's something to consider, obviously. So this is the Vallejo Heavy. So I really am going a bit overboard here to try and make it feel the same as the hairspray one. Quite a lot there, you can see it's dimpling. Vallejo medium next, you get the idea. Yep, medium. And then Vallejo Light. There. Okay, let's move on to AK Interactive. For my own pieces, I'm going to use the Vallejo for this little door. Let's see how it works. It certainly goes on strange. Oh, bollocks. It certainly goes on strange, so 
kind of dimples straight away as if it needs to be thinned, but you know, I wouldn't want to thin it because that might mess with the formula. Okay, that's that one. Lastly, the AK Interactive Heavy Chipping Fluid. Um, I think they do sell a smaller, like less intense, more normal chipping fluid, but this is the one I've got. Let's do it. Heavy first. I'll be interested to see if this sprays any differently. Well, okay. So that's spraying quite opaque. Hope you can see that there. It's kind of funky. Uh, I did clean my brush thoroughly between these two. AK medium. Alright, that's medium. And AK light. Very light. So there you can see the difference. Heavy on the left, medium in the middle, light on the right. There's Vallejo, and there's Hairspray. I think, I've used the, the AK Interactive before, and I have to admit I wasn't terribly impressed with it. So I think I'm not going to use it on any of the pieces that I actually care about. So I might go, that one's got Vallejo, I think I'm going to go Hairspray on the others because I know what it does. And, you know, I know I won't be disappointed. I've still got a lot of the model to do, so if I fall in love with Vallejo or AK, I can do the rest of it that way. But for now, I'm going to hairspray those bad boys. So as they're drying here, it's really important to let that hairspray or chipping fluid dry properly. As they're drying, these are the AK Interactives. You can see most of that white scum is gone. It's a little bit still here on the heavy one. I can get that in focus. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of white scum around the end there. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty good. The Vallejo is drying with a really mottled orange peely effect, which looks okay for us. I mean, that's the heavy on the left through to the light on the right. And even the light one really has that mottling effect. Um, you can see the piece that I sprayed with it. And I you know, didn't go overboard, I don't think. It's just gone really funky. We'll see. I haven't used that before today. And the last is the hairspray. And it's dried perfectly flat, so, so far, that's my winner. But we'll see. The proof will be in the pudding. Just as a side note, it's about 30 minutes later on a really hot, summery day. And the hairspray, perfectly dry to the touch. The AK, perfectly dry to the touch. The Vallejo is still a little tacky, even on the light one, still a tiny bit tacky to the touch. So a long drying time for the Vallejo. Alright, so I've waited for everything to dry. I have painted my scratch-built stuff with uh, Tamiya enamels, so a bit of a mix of blue, flat blue and light blue, and they've gone really beautifully. I always find those paints just amazing. So these are all hairspray except for this piece which was the Vallejo chipping medium and I painted that yellow and if we get up nice and close you might even be able to see, I don't know if you can, but it's starting to actually chip a tiny bit already so you can sort of see it around here starting to actually flake away, chip away already without even putting water on it. Now the most important thing, I guess, for all our test bed here, all our spoons, is that both the Vallejo and the AK Interactive specify in their ingredients, uh, in their instructions, that you need to uh, apply a water-based acrylic paint. So you put the chippy medium on, and then you put a final coat of water-based acrylic paint. So look, my go-to paint is Tamiya enamels. I just find they spray beautifully. I always find them hassle-free. But, in the interests of doing what the manufacturers say, I'm going to spray paint all my spoons with AK Interactive water-based acrylic paint. Um, so, I'll spray them. For each of them, I'm going to spray the heavy, quite a heavy coat of paint, the medium, a medium coat of paint, the light, a light coat of paint, and we'll see what kind of effects we get. So, I'll get that all set up, I'll spray one, show you what it looks like, and then I'll go ahead and do the others. Alright, so here we are. Spray painting heavy coat.
All right, actually get that on camera. Okay. So that's one quite thick coat of paint. The medium, a much lighter coat. And then the light, a very, very light coat indeed, as the name suggests. There, done. So, those are the three coats. I'm going to do the same for the others. Now I do my turn. You can help too. Now, interestingly, on the Vallejos, like a minute, 60 seconds after I had finished spraying the paint on, it started to crackle already. So, interesting that it's such a quick effect. I mean, look at that. Wow. It's really fast. Daddy! It's fast, I'm telling you. I know! I know it's for 15 years. Did you really? Um, so yeah, fascinating that that's gone so quick on that. That's the heavy, medium, light, and bang, straight away. Big impact. So I'm going to have to try yeah. and move fast on these. With everything nicely dried, Here's our AK Interactive. Here's our Vallejo. And here's our hairspray. So with the hairspray, one thing I wasn't expecting is there is a little bit of that crackling effect. Let's get it in focus. A little bit of that crackling effect as well on the heaviest of the hairspray. Uh, none of the other two have it. No, that's just the bit showing through from the rust there. Um, the Vallejo, quite a lot, even on the medium, and on the heavy, quite a lot. A little bit on the light, but, you know, that's partly the paint job. And on the AK Interactive, no sign of that crackling effect at all, even on the heaviest one. Oh, maybe a tiny bit at the top there. So, now, it's time to start chipping away, see what we get. Is the fun part, the actual chipping. So here are my tools. Scalpel, toothpick, old toothbrush. Uh, I think I will start with the, the AK light. And I'm gonna play pretty conservatively to start with. So I'm just gonna wet a little bit and see what happens. One thing in my experience is you only get one shot at this. So if you do it and you don't like it, you can't once it's dry, you can't come back and re-wet it and hope to do it again. You get one shot. So that's coming off in a pretty big chunk there already. So this is the light version, as I said. Let's get a bit more actual light on this. So this is the light version. What I find is like a tapping effect gives you a better result than a scrub, scrub, scrub effect. If you scrub, 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 you do just have big sloughs off like that. So you can see what's already happening there. It's looking pretty good. There were a couple of hairs in this toothbrush, which isn't really professional, sorry. <laughs> So you can see, like, this is pretty gentle, and it's coming away really effectively. And that's kind of what I expected with the light, AK Interactive, uh, with the light paint on each of them. Um, you know, it's all in the name of experimentation, I guess. That's how we're looking. the most fascinating footage you've ever seen. Alright, I'm going to try the toothpick on some of this, so 
and just wet the area. So I mean you could just dump the whole thing in the water but I find working in a small area works more effectively, you, you have more control. And I guess, you know, with whatever you're doing, you obviously want to try and strive for realism. So it would be good to have representative photos of chipping on a real tank or a real aeroplane to get a sense of what it would actually look like. So there's a big chunk just come off here. I'm just wetting the whole thing, as you can see. So down here it seems to come away very easily, not so easy on this side, and I'm not quite sure why that would be. We'll try the scalpel, this is generally my go-to for scratches, just because you know it really does tear through that surface really fast. I'm going to do a little bit more. I realise this isn't the most fascinating video in the world, so I'm going to do a little bit more, but that's basically what I'm going to be doing for each of these. So, we'll show you how we go. One important thing to note, when you're at the level you're happy with, make sure you dry it off and pat it dry. So you don't want to leave it wet, because the water will continue doing its job and will continue eating away at that paint. Yeah, on, focus, there we go. So that is, you can see down here where the paint was a bit thicker, it's actually come away a little bit more easily. So the light seems to be really, really good for that kind of mottling a paint effect, but not so crash hot for scratches, just doesn't seem to work very well. Interesting. Okay, I'll keep going with the next two. Currently working on the AK Interactive Heavy, and you can see this sort of dimpling effect when the water starts to kick in, so that's the water breaking down the surface of the paint. You know when you get that sort of minute bubbling effect that you're pretty good to go, so just a little hint for you guys there. I'll keep going. Starting. I'm onto the Vallejo here, and I thought it would be interesting to see just what happens. Whoa, if I knock the camera over. No, just what happens with these ones that are already quite crackled to begin with. So this is the Vallejo Medium. I've already done the Vallejo Light, and it was actually really effective. So I'll show you that one just quickly. But yeah, it's come up a bloody treat. Um, so this is the Vallejo Medium that I'm wetting at the moment. And for each one, just doing the same routine, so... Attacking it with a toothbrush on this side. I'll go back and do more. Attacking it with a toothpick in this bottom sort of 7 o'clock area. And attacking it with the scalpel at the sort of 10 o'clock position. Hmm. No, it's not going as crazy as I expected. I mean, it's, it is crazy, but it's not going as ridiculous as I had expected. Anyway, I'll keep going. I'll just show you what's happening on the Vallejo Heavy. So, on all the others, when I scratch with... Oh, come on, focus. Getting there. Oh, nearly got it. Alright. On all the others, when I scratch with the scalpel, you get these lovely thin scratches. On the Vallejo, it's just peeling the paint back in thick chunks. You can see what's happening there as I do it. It's just coming away in great big chunks, so there's no finessing there. So I'm just going to yeah, dry that one off now. It's, uh, it's a bit of a mess. The chipping is amazing. You know, if you just want to do the toothbrush specs for spe speckled chipping, but for any kind of scratches, I don't know. It's not, it's not doing it for me. You know, it's it's big, it's dramatic, but it's not what I want. If I want a subtle scratch here and there, and the paint you know, just peels away in a big chunk like that, around here, it's not what I'm after. Hmm, anyway. So, Vallejo. Some good results. I'll go through it all with you in a minute. But yeah, a bit disappointed there with that one.
and I'm going to record the hairspray as I go because I think this is going to be my favourite of the three. Um, you know, I don't want to be unscientific here and go in with a preconceived idea. Well, I do have a preconceived idea, but I'm going to try and not let that cloud my judgement. So this is currently the light coating of hairspray and the light paint of hairspray. And you can see that, that is wearing away quite nicely. I'm, I'm happy with that. So yeah, I just want to show you, you know, that I'm not doing anything different for this one than I have done for any of the others. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, toothpick time. Where did I put my toothpick? There it is. So I'm hoping this is fairly in focus for you. Toothpick. Oh, I'm not getting anything there. Maybe it needs a bit more water. Not a lot happening. Okay, that's what's happening with toothpick. And then scalpel. So generally scalpel is my preferred way. Have I already said that? If I have said it already, apologies. But yeah, generally scalpel is my preferred way to get the scratches. there between the scalpel scratches and the toothpick scratches. So that's hairspray light. I'll keep going. So what were the final results? Let's go through them one by one. Um, I have here the AK Interactive set of three. This is the AK Heavy. And as you can see here, once we get some focus, um, yeah, look, just nothing special. You can see where big chunks came off. Um, you can see where the scratches came through. Look, it's, it's, it's fine, but it's nothing impressive. The AK Medium, again, look, it's, it's okay. So we got a little bit of nice wear around here. Um, but the scratches, nothing impressive. Again, it's just like, yeah, it's fine. But, you know, um, here where it kind of pulled a little bit, where the chipping medium pulled a little bit when it was wet, it's just taken away the paint entirely in a big unrealistic slob. And lastly, AK Light. Yeah. Again, the scratches are quite delicate, I guess. I'll give it points for that. But there's no, well, not enough subtlety, I would say, around here where I tapped away with the toothbrush. Um, so in every single one there were toothpick scratches here, scalpel scratches here, toothpick, uh, sorry, toothbrush tapping here. Um, yeah, look, it just underwhelmed me. Nothing impressive. Uh, next up, let's do Vallejo. So Vallejo Heavy, it's still quite glossy as you can see, and you can also see here, for example, or sort of here, where the paint has just come away in great big slabs of skin almost. So, yeah, I was really unimpressed with that. Vallejo Medium. Um, I loved this one, strangely. Like, I thought when this crazing started, I was like, oh my god, that's going to go horribly. And true, like, if that was just three scratches with a toothpick, I'd be unhappy if that's where I was after some really subtle scratches. Here are the scalpel scratches. But what I love is this area here, there's this really beautiful subtlety, it's, it's kind of weathered, it's old, it's been out in the rain and the, wind, and the wind and the snow for a long time in the sun. And the same with the Vallejo light. So the scratches, quite subtle, but this area here is just beautiful. So there's a real subtlety to the weathering there. So for Battle damage, yeah, great, but for weathering, for long-term out in the wind and the rain and the elements, weathering, loved it. 
and lastly hairspray. Here's my three hairspray. Hairspray heavy. Um, yeah, a little bit, again, just big chunks of it came off. So there's no subtlety here at all. Um, big chunks just came off. You can see again where it just came off in great big reams of skin. Uh, hairspray medium. I loved this effect. So some nice scratches, really controllable scratches there actually. And um, I loved you know, the, the subtlety around here. A little bit heavy handed just here, but around here, quite nice and subtle. And hairspray light, I was pleasantly surprised by this. So there's this really beautiful weathering again of you know being out in the wind and the rain for years and years and years and the paint has just worn away. Um, the scratches are a little bit disappointing so the toothpick couldn't actually even break the surface. Scalpel did the job there but what I would say is that my three favourites were probably, let me find the right ones, okay my three favourites were Vallejo Medium, Vallejo Light and Hairspray Medium. So, these three I felt gave just the right amount of subtlety. If you can look past the crazing here, Vallejo Medium's great. Vallejo Light and the Hairspray Light, look at, Vallejo Light is probably my favourite of all. Because it's just, it's just beautiful, it's subtle, it's really lovely. Um, I felt the Vallejo gave a bit more control in the Hairspray, and you can see the results there. Between, say, the middle one, the Hairspray where it was, sorry, the Vallejo where it was light, and the hairspray medium. Um, so look, I think, you know, never let it be said, you know, you guys have seen my channel, you know that I love to save money wherever possible. Um, never let it be said that I don't change that manifesto when the results speak for themselves. The Vallejo, it was a pleasure to work with. The AK, I wouldn't touch it again to save my life. Uh, it just, it was totally underwhelming in every way. But the Vallejo, I loved it. It was a real pleasure. Um, you know, if you're just starting out or you want to experiment, go the hairspray. It's great. I've gotten beautiful results from hairspray before. But um, for my money, I'm going to be using for layout chipping from now on. Um, yeah, I guess the other learning would be don't glob on your paint or your hairspray or your chipping medium too thick because all of the heavies were disappointing. You know, every single time it just came off in great big chunks and the paint just wore away in great big chunks. Not a pleasure. But I go, and yeah, you guys already knew that when it comes to spray painting paint, put it on in two light coats rather than one big thick one. And just to finally fill you in, here are my science fiction pieces. So, some really lovely subtle weathering there. Pretty happy with that. Uh, here is the little control box. Very subtle. Here's the door to the control box. And lastly, here is the stripy one, which was done with Vallejo. So I'm really happy with that. Looks great. I'm tremendously happy with those guys. Um, look, I hope this has been helpful to you. I know that my friend Panzermeister36 has also recently done a chipping mediums video. I believe he compared two techniques in that one. Um, I deliberately haven't seen his video yet because I didn't want his results to colour my results in any way. But I would recommend if you're interested, head on over to his channel, Panzermeister36, and see what he has to say. I'm going to go and have a look at it once I've uploaded this video. And um, I hope it's been helpful. If you've got any questions, chime in below. But otherwise, I'm going to try and find, find somewhere to put my nine different spoons and uh, I'll catch you guys next time on Dave's Model Workshop. Cheers. Bye.